Hello again, friends. Welcome back to the Beaver Town Compound. So today we're in the shop and uh, going to talk a little bit about chainsaw chain sharpening. Uh, it's another firewood related video. Uh, so what I got is I'm getting ready to go out of town for a couple days and uh, my dad is as well. He's going to a different place. Uh, he's been cutting up uh, bundle wood, firewood with his uh, with his steel 391. Yeah, 391 saw. So anyway, he keeps a couple spare chains and he's he was telling me the other day that they're uh, needing, needing of sharpening. So, you know, he does he does hand file the same way I do. Um but, you know, usually every every one or two tanks of gas depending on how hard rough it's been on the saw. Uh but every once in a while, it actually needs to be bench ground, and I have a bench grinder. So um, typically, usually, usually I he does about the same. He follows suit with me. Uh, it's nice when you can teach the old man something once in a while, or at least he imitates you because he thinks you're doing it the better way. Um, usually, like I said, I'll I'll sharpen every every two tanks of gas usually, um, unless something happens. I dig in the dirt or I hit a rock or something like that. Then. Then I'll then I'll put a file to them uh, earlier than that, uh, but instead of doing the hand file, you know I I tried doing the, just the, the plain hand filing, and man I just don't have the talent like Buck and Billy Ray does. I'll be honest with you, um, and I'd looked into the, the hand grinders like uh, Chris uses on in the wood yard. Um, I end up getting a ben using a bench grinder. Uh, get I got one. I asked for it for Christmas a long time ago and. Uh, it was kind of one of those win-win because dad got it for me for Christmas, but he always reminds me of that. So when he needs ch chain sharpened, so uh, anyway, so I'm gonna go over how you show what I use for filing, uh, and then we'll I'll show you the bench grinder how we set it up, and I'll uh, get start getting chain sharpened. Right, guys, so part in the mess. It's you know like everybody else's garage. It's a little bit of a mess in here. Um, that's my toolbox that I well, I was mowing. I kind of caught uh, caught a tree branch with the, with the toolbox, and it broke, ripped the ripped my tactical ammo box in half that I used. It was mounted on the tractor, so I'll come up with a better mounting location later. Oh, and by the way, beverage of the day: Molson Canadian, good beer, eh? All right, enough said. So for filing, uh, what I use makes life real easy. This is the steel three and one. Is it three and one, two and one? Yeah, yeah. call them an easy sharp, basically. Um, what it does, if you're not familiar with this, uh, it's got two sides. There's two file. There's three files in it, two round files, and you buy these according to the size chain you have. This one actually is for my MS290, which has three two five chain. Um, but what it's got is two round files, and then the center flat file is for your rakers. Uh, followers, rakers, depth gauges. Um, that's about the only three terms I've known for them. Uh, depends on your vernac local vernacular, what you know them as. But the nice thing about these is they got the little rods here. And when you lay it on the saw, it follows the teeth and it guides you. So you, you can't, typically can't overdo it. Um, and as long as you keep the angle, you see the handles are angled. As long as you keep the angle right, Actually, this is backwards from where it would be on that one. Um, yeah, there we go. So as you go along, it cuts both the, the sawtooth and the rakers, and it keeps it the right amount. If you do, the nice thing is if you do this all the you know on a regular basis, it keeps the rakers down. I'm going to call them rakers because that's what I'm used to. Uh, it keeps them down to where after a do, when you got to do a good sharpening, unless you got a tooth that's really messed up. Then you typically don't have to do too much with the rakers, but I do have uh, for doing that. Now this grinder will do. This is the Oregon bench grinder. Uh, forget the model number, but anyway, it's not the top of the line, but it's one down from it. You know, and uh, but it does have a wheel that you can change out, and that does the rakers. But you got to set them at least one of them manually by hand. Uh, and for that, I have this. It's an Oregon depth gauge tool. I mean, I've had what came with the came with the sharpener. Sorry about moving around so much. Was this little card thing? 
you know what, I just, yeah, I, I don't like it. I don't think I was very accurate with it. Um, I don't, I just didn't care for it. Um, this is nice because if you're not familiar with one of them, I'll do this one-handed. I can't really sharpen one. So here's actually Dad's chain that he needs sharpened. But basically, you lay this. Come on, focus. Focus, grasshopper. Okay, you can't really see good on this one, so let me pull one back to a different side. There we go. Okay, so you see, you set this across the, the tooth. Focus. There's your depth gauge. And what you do is you basically just feel, and see this one is below that. So if it's below this line, if you can't feel it through here, then it's plenty, then that should be plenty of depth on it. Okay, that'll, what the depth gauge does, if you're not familiar, that, that tells your chain how far it can bite into wood. So as far as sharpening goes, uh, with the bench grinder, again, this is the Oregon bench sharpener and I know Harbor Freight has one my dad bought one of them and he used it a couple of times and made the chains it managed to make the chains actually duller and so he never used it again so I got this one and now I did so I do that do the heavy duty sharpening so typically what I do first is go through the chain if it's really dirty I'll clean it off with some WD-40 um, and then you go through and look at each of the teeth now, Dad said, he's like, I saw sparks flying. So I'm guessing bundle wood, he probably hit the band or hit something, or maybe there was a there was a nail hidden in one of the slabs. Who knows? Um, but anyway, kind of go through, and this one's really dull. He has sharpened it a few times, and again, with the Easy Sharp, which I'm wondering how he did that. It almost looks like he broke it off. Typically, with just the Easy Sharp, you get this. You see how it's actually keeping the raker down pretty much the right level. Um, for some people, that's a little aggressive. These, the Easy Sharps, the two and ones, whatever you call it, um, they they'll take the rakers down pretty much to the 025 level, which is where where I keep mine, um, which makes them kind of aggressive. You know, this if you're kind of a novice with a chainsaw and you got safety chain, it might not be for you. But basically, so I go through and look at the teeth. Now this one. This is the one on at least this side. Each direction I find the one that's damaged the most. And you see, he took a nice chunk out of that one. Um, you know, not as bad as some of these, but they're... Focus. Yeah, see, they're all kind of like that. So basically what you want to do with the bench grinder is you set it to the worst, to grind the worst one. Um, that's one thing with the bench grinder. You're going to grind all the teeth, at least in one direction, the same amount. Um, and you want to set it to the worst one. That has its pros and cons. Uh, you know, if you if you knock a tooth pretty bad, one or two, because you you caught something, you know, you're not going to, you know, with like a hand grinder or just hand filing, you can, with a normal hand file, you can take that one tooth or two tooth teeth or whatever down and still have a lot in the rest of them. Uh, personal preference. I don't think it makes that much of a difference. Um you know, I guess I, my thought is, is I'd rather have the teeth all be the same, and if it wears out, it wears out. I mean, I know people who just chains, they, they just replace chains when they, they don't even sharpen them. Um, they just throw them out. Me, I'm too much of a cheap person to do that. Um, I go, I would, if I did that, as much cutting as I do, that would get expensive. And we all know those of us that heat with wood, Part of the, hit the biggest draw to it, why we do a lot of the work we do, is to keep costs down. So, so basically, like I said, once you find the worst one, that ends up being the starting point. Um, so I've got that one marked. I use a red Sharpie marker. Mark that one. That one will be my starting point for this side. And then I'll go through, after I've done all these, done all of them this direction, I'll go back and check and find a starting point. If all of them seem pretty similar, then... Literally, I'll just move on to the next tooth and reset. So, anyway, give me a second here, and we'll go into how we set up the bench grinder. Okay, so I'm back. Again, yeah, we're on the bench grinder, and I got the chain in here. So, first thing you got to do, besides make sure you have the right wheel in there, you know, you got to set your angle. Um, a lot of the boxes will tell you what angle these go to, um, tell you the size of the 
size of the links and whatnot. It's three-eighths chain. Um, tells you to set the record depth 025. This is not safety chain. Um, it gives you the filing it size of the file 1364. So that doesn't necessarily go uh, contribute to the wheel or uh, carry over to the wheel. It does tell you 30 degree is the angle, so it's this angle right here where it's going in that direction. Um, and then the not sure that it shows it on here. It should. I know an Oregon box shows you all the directions, but basically what angle the edge itself is. So, which I know with this chain, it's 60. So, how you set that is this knob right here. You can see the gradient here. You got 90, 80, 70, 60, 50. I actually have some Oregon chains that specify 55 degrees. I've pretty much gotten to the point of Oregon chain, steel chain, because um, that's the two I have. You know, I, I really, honestly, the only difference I have in sharpening is the down angles. Oregon chains that I have want a 10 degree down angle. Steel chain is 90, is zero degree down angle. Other than that, I honestly, I just grind them 30 and 60. Okay, 60 degrees, 30 degrees, at least on my 3 8 chain. Um, I'd have to off, off top of my head, my three, two, five chain. I think, I think, no, that's 30, 60 as well. Um, I did have a saw before that took chain that required a 20 degree, 20 degree angle. Um, and that's set down here. So you see, you got these marks you got to make sure you're cutting in the right direction, which I am. Okay. Right hand does one side. What left hand cutters have, you turn it the opposite direction. Um, which one mistake I made early on, uh, you know, when I, I'd set the saw depth, the tooth depth, and just figured I'd cut them all the same depth, and just, I set my, I set how how much cutoff on the tooth I did, and then just turned it and to do the left-hand cutters, and I found out that's not the right way to do You need to reset completely as far as your depth of, your depth of grind uh, each time, so... Anyway, there's a wheel down here. Now, if it, for Oregon chains that require, or any other chain that requires a down angle, you loosen this up, and you set it to your angle, which there's 30. So, they have the same, you basically, to set your down angle, it's either 0 or 10. Okay, and it's right or left hand. If you're doing right-handed cutters, you're going to do, you're going to follow their thing of right away. In this case, I'm doing a left-handed cutter. I'm not going to keep this angle, but if you want it for left hand to 10 degree down angle, pull it back. You see how it rocked up like that? If you're doing a right handed cutter, you push it away, right away, and that'll cut at that angle. Okay. Again, for steel, just get it settled down in there. Zero degrees. I don't have any steel that chain that requires a down angle, but. <clears throat> there may be some in existence. I don't know. I don't have every chain in the world. So the next thing we're going to set up is we're going to set our depth of cut of grind. And this may be hard to see. So basically, the way you can start off with this, you keep this loose. And this is the stopper right here. Okay. That's as you're going, you just kind of grind. When you go to the next tooth, you pull back on it and lock it in. And now the chain's locked. Okay, it's locked, it can't move. So to check our depth of grind, you're gonna bring the you're gonna bring the wheel down. You see, right in there, we're not even touching the tooth. So how I get my starting point, let's see again, I know how you're seeing this. Um, what I'll do is I'll actually bring the bring it down. And then bring it till it touches and stops. Don't reef it. Just turn the knob until it stops. Okay, that at least gets me to where I'm shaving it. Now, this tooth is pretty beat. So now, we're going to go in just a, just a hair farther on it. Lock it in. And when you're setting this, make sure you're locked in. 
that should be that should be bloody close okay and then and you can see a little light i need just a tiny bit more on this one not much just a touch just a titch as an old friend of mine used to say there we go so now i don't know if you can see it where i'm looking i don't see light between the tip anymore okay the tip was kind of broken off there so now this is going to recut this and this is going to be a pretty aggressive cut um and you want to do this slowly okay and the other thing you want to set too which this one should already be set for three its chain is you want to make sure you get down and get the gullet but you don't go so far that you cut into the chain so once you think you got this set we go ahead and turn this on let there be light and then we go ahead and just kind of make a first cut just bring it to the touches and don't sit there and ream on it you heat up the tooth and you get an edge built up on it you want to just just touch it just touch and again you don't want to get down oh there's a mouse caught on my leg good lord you just bring her down and i'm gonna look here and again you want to get the gullet okay but see what that did that got us back to where that tooth is shiny again so you do that and again it's just little little taps there and like i said i'm gonna kind of go down and see if i can again see i'm getting right down to the gullet but i'm not i'm not cutting into the chain i don't want to cut into the chain length at all you do that you weaken the chain and then you're then this you're you're pretty much up the creek. So after you're done here, you move on to the next tooth, pull it back, lock her down. Just little taps, little taps. Eventually, eventually you'll get down to where You'll start just nice and easy going down there, but you don't want to heat up. If the edge of that tooth gets red, you're going to have to file it to knock that ridge of molten metal down, molten metal, slag, whatever it ends up being. So we just do that. Okay. So that's pretty much that. Um, I'm going to go through and I'm going to do these and I'll show you how we, how we turn out afterwards. All right, guys. So I'm back. I uh, got everything... On the one side done okay so let's see a good comparison here so you see how rounded that one is and got a little chunk out of it now nice and smooth line and get some light on this you see how it's shine uh, you can't really see really well okay it's nice and shiny that's kind of dull looking where this is nice and polishedly shine shiny polish whatever you want to say um, and you can just feel it here at snag. It's like kitty claws Or this one Doesn't do nothing that one sticks so that's what we want What I want to show you here real quick is I showed you how to set this but now so I moved over to the other side and I haven't touched any adjustment other than to spin this spin this over to 30 degrees Okay, so we're at 30 degrees to do the right side cutters now. And when I bring this down, see if we can show you here. So it's it's close, but you see that little light? You see how in the friends, you see how the corner is? It's God, it's hard to see. I apologize. I need more light for this. Um but it's it's close. But not quite there it needs just a just a hair on it actually so i'm kind of impressed by that usually it's a little more than that so we're going to take and we're going to loosen the nut here and just bring her forward just a just a smidgen loosen that a little more so 
when I turn that, see it brings it forward just a touch. So now, lock it in. I might have got a little too. I might have got a little bit carried away. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I just want to take that nick out of. The tooth, the tooth kind of has a rounded, took the little tip off. And I just want it to go deep enough to bring that snaggle tooth back. I guess I'll call it a snaggle tooth. Yeah, I went way too much on that. All right, so let's back her off another hair. There we go. It's hard doing this one-handed. Just, sometimes you fuss with it just a little bit. And I'm a perfectionist on these. Okay. Bring it. I always pull it tight back to it. And normally I'm, on, I'm doing that two-handed. Um, let's see how we are now, friends. Oh, look at that. There we go. We're cutting good, and I don't... We're just going to take it down where I don't see, see, I don't see any light now. So that's going to make a nice clean edge when we do this. We hope. All right. So I'm going to try to do this on camera. And if I mess it up, I guess I would add a chain, right? Okay. Nice little tap, especially because you're going to be aggressive here. Not too bad that's she's nice and sharp now I might give it I might not take quite so much man that's a lot I really don't want to take his tooth down that much but boy to get through it anyway I'm gonna fine-tune this a little bit and I'm gonna go through and sharpen the rest and I'll show you how we turn out all right so we're all done uh, got the other side done I did back off a little bit how much I was cutting that one tooth was pretty bad, but the rest of them weren't, so it works out. Um, he's got he's gonna end up with one tooth that's a little bit a little bit shorter than the others, but not by a whole lot. I mean, that's I, I can live with that. Um, it's not gonna make it cut crooked or anything like that. It just means that that side of the chain's where that particular tooth is gonna wear out before the rest. So we got it sharp now. See how she picks right up there. Sharper is my cat's uh, cat squeaks claws. A little squeaky. One of these days I have to show you a video or put a picture. Maybe if I can figure out when I edit this video, I'll see if I can put a picture of Squeak. He's an adorable cat. He was a pocket kitty. He was a runt. You could fit him in a pocket. He was. I could fit his whole body in my hand. And I'm, I mean, I've got decent hands, but you know, he was he was a tiny thing. Now he's a big fat cat. So he lives a good life. But I want to go over is checking the depth gauges. So as I said, Dad uses the two in one, same as I do. And he's actually, I think we're going to have a little talk about with him. When you use these, don't press down super hard. Um, you don't want to, if you press down super hard, if these guides can flex. I don't know if you can, I really can't do it one-handed, but they'll flex a little bit. You, know, you got a lot of leverage when you're sitting there holding it across the saw and you can actually make it cut your depth gauges a little bit more aggressive than you might like um some people i've seen people that'll take these right down to nothing right out the gate um i like to have a little bit left on them um and these are he still got it pretty pretty good there you know now actually i think pretty much after even as aggressive as i had to cut this chain because he he did a number on her boys and girls. Uh, but now we're right about right. So you see, get up here. There we go. So you see, she's right in line. Come on, focus. Focus. There we go. So holding it across the teeth, she's right in line with that. So 
and that's his lowest depth gauge. So I'm gonna double check a couple more just to make sure they're even. In fact, I may even set the grinder up and, and grind them all using this as the guide tooth just cause make sure they're all even for them. Um, it's a little easier to use those two and ones, three and one, but two and one, easy sharp. It's easier to use the easy sharp when your your followers, your rakers, they're all the same. They're all similar cut. Um, it just rides nicer on it. So anyway, then there's a sharpened tooth. One is up. I may go back and touch that one. That one for some reason has a little bit of a. Oh, it's just it's just how the camera's seeing it. Okay. And there's a little, there's a little flash there, a little nub, but it will be all right. Um, again, I talked about not getting these super hot because you'll build up a ridge, which actually I kind of did on purpose on one just to, and I didn't want to do it super much because I don't want it to file it. You know, you really can't see it all that well on this tooth. You see how you can kind of see a little bit of a ridge built up there? That's from heating them up. That's the one I did it to. Um, you can file it down. Um, you know, if, if it's just one or two teeth you got a little carried away with, you know, it'll wear off first cut or two you make with the chain. Um, if you did to a lot of them, you're going to have to go back with a flat file and kind of knock that down. Um, but why do things twice, right? When we say do it once, do it right. So that's it, guys. That changed sharp. Like I said, I'm going to double check the rakers before I give it back to Dad. I got one more to do for him. Um, next time I do a chain sharpening video, I'll try to have where I've got... I've got another camera. I'm using my phone to make these videos right now. Um, I do have a, like a GoPro. It's a Chinese knockoff GoPro, but what else, you know. Um, I'll have that set up so you can watch me do it through the whole thing. This is kind of a very basic video. Um, again, I appreciate everybody who's been watching. Um, your comments have been constructive. Hopefully you like this one better. I'm holding the phone sideways. I still am using the phone, uh, but that way you don't get that holding up to the phone effect, that square box. So we'll see if this video turns out better. Hopefully it does. Hey guys, like I said, thank you for everybody for who's been watching uh, the Facebook group, the Log Splitter World Facebook group. Um, if you're on Facebook, check that out. Log splitter, log splitter, homemade, commercial, and residential. Uh, it's a great group of guys. You know, all of you guys that have watched this, and a couple of guys subscribed. Thank you so much for that. Um, if you if you have if this is your first time here, you like what you see. I got two other videos. One more on firewood, and then the other one uh, about some of the hydroponics and the gardening that we do. So, if you like this video. Hit the like and subscribe button, you know, do me a solid there, and come back for more. Uh, it might be a couple days, might be a little while before I make another video. Uh, like I said, again, I'm going to be going out of town for a little bit of time, uh, taking a much-needed break. So, until uh, I see you guys again, this is John from the Beavertown Compound and Beavertown Outdoors. Everybody be good to each other. Stay healthy, my friends.